in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You are our God. You are our mighty God. The God of the Bible, God. Hallelujah. We honor you on this morning, oh God. We honor you on this morning. We lift you up. We exalt your name on high. We come to say thank you, oh God. Thank you for keeping us, oh God. Throughout the week, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, this morning for bringing us together, Lord God. Hallelujah. To hear your word, to give you worship, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you this morning, Lord God, for clothing us in our right minds, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for legs to move, oh God, hands to lift up to you, Lord God. We thank you, oh God. Oh, Father, we invite you into this place, Lord God. We invite your presence into this atmosphere, oh God. Come on in and do what only you can do, Lord. Move by your spirit, oh God. We come this morning laying every situation, every circumstance before you, Lord. Every brokenness of ours, oh God. We lay at your feet and we ask that you put us back together again, oh God. Put our minds back together. Give us Christ-like minds, oh God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Help us, Lord God, hallelujah, to submit unto the submit unto the Holy Spirit Lord God help us to submit unto you Lord God and move by your spirit help us oh God we lift up our hearts oh God and we welcome you in this morning Lord God hallelujah Jesus we ask Lord God that you prepare our hearts for worship that you prepare our hearts to hear your word Lord God oh father accept our worship this morning oh God Help us, Lord God, to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I pray, Lord God, as your word come forth, Lord God, that it falls on the good grounds of our heart, Lord God. Cultivate the soils of our heart right now so that we may receive the word, retain it, and apply it to our everyday lives, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, look on the musicians this morning, oh God, and touch them in a special way, Lord. Help them to play on one accord, Lord God, to the tune of your Holy Spirit, Lord. The worship team, Lord God, the praise and worship team, Lord God. Help them to bring, invoke your presence in this place, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Do what only you can do. Move by your spirit, oh God, hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name this morning. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Father, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. For there's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody great, oh, God. We searched all over and can't find nobody like you, Lord. Oh, mighty God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory to your name. Thank you this morning, Lord, for our, pa for our pastor, Lord. Thank you for Bishop and First Lady God. Oh, Father, bless them and keep them, Lord. Continue to keep guidance to our children, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, continue to keep them, Lord God. Help them in their studies, oh Lord. Protect them as they sit in the classroom, Lord. In the name of Jesus, oh, we thank you this morning, oh God. Father God, it's in Jesus' mighty name that we do pray. Amen. Jesus, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. 
wants us to introduce hymns each morning because the church has gotten away from hymns and so we're going to do a hymn this morning I think AJ got the words and we're going to see but it should be familiar we're going to surrender our all to Jesus this morning thank you Jesus hallelujah worthy. your voice and sing.
Yes, God, we surrender to you. Oh, oh I, I surrender all. I surrender all, all to thee. on the Lord this morning. We're going to celebrate. Y'all ready? Come on, clap your hands.
Because if he's done it before, he can do it again. Don't you dare give up. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Power, love, and a sound mind. Don't you dare give up. Hallelujah. Don't you dare throw in the towel. You've come too far. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've come too far. Hallelujah. What the songwriter says. We come this far by faith. Hallelujah. Leaning on. Y'all know that song. <laughs> Trusting in, trusting in his holy word. And the word says, he never failed me yet. He's never failed you. So you better keep holding on. The Lord makes a way out of no way. The Lord makes a way out of no way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you made a way. Don't know how, but you did it. You made a way. Standing here. Not knowing how we'll get through this test. But holding on faith you know best nothing catches you by surprise you've got this figured out you're watching us now you you've made a way you made a way help me sing you made a when my back was, when my back, back was against, against the wall, and it looked as if it would fall, you made it. Yeah. Now we're standing, now we're standing, only because, only because you made a way. Yes, God. Oh, you made it again. Everybody help me sing. You made a way when our backs were
And I'm standing here only because Oh, and I'm standing here only because you made a way You made a way Come on, help me sing You made Oh God, blot out our iniquity. 
iniquities, oh God, so you can hear our cries, you can hear our pleas, you can hear our supplication. Be pleased with our prayers, be pleased with our worship, be pleased, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we're waiting on you, oh God. We're waiting on you, oh God. And you said in your word, they that wait upon you shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk and not grow weary. They shall run and not faint. We are waiting on you, Father. No other help do we know. Father God, we ask that you bless the remaining of this service. Do what you want to do, Lord. Move on your man servant, oh God, that's going to bring forth your word, oh God. Move on out the teeth, oh God. Assist the pastor, oh God. Touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, oh God. Anoint him afresh on this morning. We need a word, oh God. Use him, oh God, in a mighty way, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, give us ears to hear, oh God. Open up our hearts, oh God. Save, deliver, and set free, oh God. Penetrate us on today and move on our bishop and our lady K in their absence, oh God. Continue to cover, continue to keep, continue to do what it is that you do best. Continue to move on the house. It is in Jesus. Mighty Master's name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Amen and hallelujah. Make some noise in this house. He is worthy to be praised. He's a worthy king. He's a worthy king. My God, my God, my God. No other help. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, God. Hello, God. Not only has he made a way, but he's making a way every day that you live and you breathe. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He gives us new mercy every morning for his death. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad we are in. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, hallelujah, y'all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to be reading the scripture for you this morning, and my scripture is coming out of the book of Isaiah, and I'm coming from... I'm coming from the 43rd chapter, Isaiah, verses 10 and 11. And they read as follows. You are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed. Neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord. And besides me, there is no Savior. The, Lord, the word of the Lord is already blessed for the people of the Lord. For the people of the Lord. Besides me, there is no Savior. this morning hallelujah thank you God thank you God you may have your seats I'm standing here only to give these announcements <laughs> Woo! hallelujah hallelujah mm, thank you God thank you Lord thank you God hallelujah hallelujah God we bless you God we bless you Lord Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, God. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord, in this place. Have your way, God. Have your way. Have your way. 
have your way in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Have your way in this place. Have your way. Have your way, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, God. Have your way. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. God some praise. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Let's, let's not be stingy with it. Hallelujah. He deserves it all. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Woo. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I, I'm standing here <laughs> to give the announcement. Um, I'm sure you already feel welcome, but I'm just going to welcome my God and star family, church family, those connecting with us on Facebook and YouTube, as well as all newcomers and returning visitors. We are so blessed that you're here with us this morning. So please follow along, mark your calendars for these upcoming events. This week's Amplified Teaching and Worship Experience will take place only on Facebook Live this Wednesday at 7.30 um, p.m. And our schedule for Amplify is every first and third Wednesday we broadcast on Facebook Live. Every second and fourth Wednesday takes place on Zoom. Bishop will be preaching um, Sunday, April 28th at Holy Temple, United Holy Church at 4 p.m. for Reverend Dr. Anthony Slade's birthday and anniversary. I believe that this service starts at 4 p.m., but they will be serving dinner at 2 p.m. for all those who can. Please try and join um, Bishop. The address is 179 South Street, that's Newburgh, New York. It's almost time to celebrate. It's almost time to celebrate. Somebody say it's anniversary time. Anniversary time. 
So it's almost anniversary time, and I'm standing to remind you of Bishop and First Lady Kay's 14th pastoral anniversary. We, 14 years. We'll be celebrating them May 17th through May 19th, and that time is rapidly approaching. It will be an awesome time of celebration. Anniversaries are always a great time here at Guidance Star. So we have our speakers lined up and we're putting a few other things into place and these details will be announced soon. As some of you may remember, every year we ask all members for an assessment, which is a special love offering for them to show our appreciation for their dedication and service to Guidance Star Church, amen? Amen? Okay, okay. <laughs> Just as a reminder, every minister and all those in leadership have been asked to make a sacrifice of $125. Every member has been asked to make a sacrifice of $100. And our young people and young adults, we didn't want to leave you out. We ask that you contribute a love offering of $25. For everyone, whatever you're able to give will be appreciated. Okay, we just ask that you do your best. Now, I made this announcement last month this time to encourage you to use the layaway plan. Does anyone remember that? Okay, thank you. I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hands, but I really hope and pray that some of you have started putting something away towards your assessment. May will be here in a few weeks, and I'm sure that you wanna be a blessing to this man and woman of God. Please remember to write Bishop or Pastor's Anniversary on your envelopes and in the subject lines of Cash App or your other online venues. Okay, we'll have additional announcements coming soon regarding that weekend. And if you have any questions, please feel free to see myself or Elder Starkey. Um, hmm. Stay up to date with us via flock note or by text and guidance G-Star to 84576 or sign up online at guidancestarchurch.flocknote.com. Follow us on all social media uh, to get more details of our announcements and upcoming events. And one last announcement. Everybody repeat after me. Happy birthday, Minister Millie. <laughs> Happy birthday, Minister Millie. We love you. Amen. Amen. Your guidance star church family. Amen. Amen. Your guidance star church family loves you, and we appreciate you and your ministry here in this house. God bless you. God bless you. At this time, I'm going to call up her children. Simani, Kwan, Simani and Kwan here. Good morning, church. Well, me and my brother, Kwan, we just wanted to give a real welcome to our mother. Happy birthday. As well as, you know how they say, train up a child in the way he should go and he should not depart from me. So we thank you for training us and we thank you for allowing us to learn God from you and our father. And Lord, we just wanted to give you your flowers while you can still see them. Happy birthday. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Will you stand to your feet with me and just begin to magnify the name of the Lord? Come on, just bless the Lord with me in this place. The presence of the Lord is in this place. <laughs> the Lord is here, and I feel a moving. And my prayer today was that God would do whatever it is that he desires to do. The presence of the Lord is here. I need, I need somebody to do me a favor um, because we're not really on speaking terms right now. So 
if you happen to see the devil on, on your way out or throughout the course of your day, I need you to pass a message along for me and just, just tell him don't, don't, don't waste his time. I don't think the enemy realizes that the fight is already fixed. <laughs> and we always win. Thanks be unto God who gives us the victory and always causes us to triumph over our enemies. If you believe you've already got victory this morning, you ought to bless the name of the Lord in this place. The devil's been trying and trying and trying and trying and trying. He doesn't even realize victory is already written in your story. I'm on the winning side. Come on, if you believe you already got victory, you ought to magnify the name of the Lord in this place. I'm telling you, just this week alone, I've been through the fire, I've been through the flood, I've been through trouble, I've been through headache, but I'm on the winning side. Victory, victory is already mine. It's already yours. And if you believe it, you ought to put a praise on it in advance. The song says, don't wait till the battle's over. You can shout right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, you ought to praise him for your victory this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Glory be to God. He's good. He's worthy. And he's in this place. Glory. So yeah, if you would, just pass that message along for me. <laughs> I'm on the winning side this morning. Anybody else? Anybody else? On the winning side. Thank you, Jesus. My God, victory <laughs> belongs to me belongs to you I gotta move on because I feel I feel the Lord in this place the woman of God already declared that healing is here and that deliverance is here and whatever you need the moment you enter into the presence of the Lord Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there, there is freedom. That if, if in the presence of the Lord there is liberty and there is freedom, that means that in the presence of the Lord, chains fall off. In the presence of the Lord, bondage is broken. And in the presence of the Lord, yokes are destroyed. And in the presence of the Lord, demonic activity has to cease. In the name of Jesus, do you believe that the Spirit of the Lord is in this place? Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Clap those hands and give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord is good, he's worthy to be praised. I promise y'all, I'm not trying to, not trying to pump you, but I feel him deep down in my soul. The Lord is good and he is worthy. I don't want to belabor the time, but I want you to go with me. I'm, I'm grateful to be here this morning. I want you to go with me to a very familiar passage of scripture. You're going you're gonna to find me this morning in Judges chapter 16. Judges chapter 16. And I want to read in your hearing uh, just a few verses. Verses 22 through 30. Judges chapter 16. Amen. We say again, happy birthday to Minister Millie. Amen. Powerful, awesome woman of God. We celebrate you today. Amen. We praise God for our bishop and our Lady K in their absence. Will you clap it up for them this morning? Amen. We praise God for them in their absence. 
I ask that you would keep uh, their family in prayer. Amen. Judges chapter 16. I want to read in your hearing verses 22 through 30. And I'm going to read from the NIV this morning. It reads, But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. That verse alone will preach. Now the rulers of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their God, and to celebrate, saying, Our God has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. When the people saw him, they praised their God, saying, Our God has delivered our enemy into our hands, the one who laid waste our land and multiplied our slain. <laughs> but while they were in high spirits, they shouted, Bring out Samson to entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he performed for them. When they stood among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who held his hand, Put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple, so that I may lean against them. Now the temple was crowded with men and women. All the rulers of the Philistines were there, and on the roof were about 3,000 men and women watching Samson perform. Verse 28 says, Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me just once more. And let me bow, one, let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines from my two eyes. Then Samson reached toward the two central pillars on which the temple stood, bracing himself against them, his right hand on one and his left hand on the other. Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus he killed many more when he died than when he lived. Can we go back to verse 28 just for a second? The Bible says, then Samson prayed to the Lord. He said, sovereign Lord, remember me. Here it is, please God, strengthen me once more. Somebody say, strengthen me once more. Ah, strengthen me once more. And let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistine for my two eyes, strengthen me once more strengthen me once more i want to preach just for a few moments from this thought strength renewed will you help me declare that this morning strength renewed spirit of the living god we just want to say thank you this morning we thank you for your mercy and we thank you for your grace we thank you for your loving kindness lord god i pray that you would hide me behind your cross this morning I pray, Lord God, that this word that you have given me would go forth and accomplish that which you have sent it to do. Lord God, I pray that none of these words would fall to the ground, Lord God, but they would be seed planted in good ground, that they would bring forth good fruit, fruits of repentance and fruits of righteousness, fruits of deliverance. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray uh, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight because you are my strength. You are my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And the people of God said amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I just want to talk to you for a few moments from this thought, strength renewed. Now, <laughs> it's funny. Every time I, I'm reading or I'm studying from Judges chapter 16, the story about Samson and Delilah, uh, many of us are familiar with the story of Samson and Delilah, but I remember the first time I actually preached from this text. Uh, you, you weren't there for the first one on June. That might have been the second one. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I remember the first time I preached from this text, I was about 18 years old. And I started preaching when I was 15, and, and uh, they gave me the chance to preach for my first men's day service. I was 18, and I had just gotten out of what I would like to call a, a situation ship at, <laughs> at 18, and, and they let me preach for this men's day service, and, and I just knew that I had a word for all of the, all of the Delilahs that were in the building. And... and, <laughs> and Y'all, I, I had to repent for preaching on that, that girl like that. 
yo, my, my topic was, my topic was, God, I have fallen in love with the enemy. It, boy, I tell you, heartbreak will make you do some crazy things. You gotta, you gotta check yourself. Uh, but I was a novice, you see, and, and, and life and age and maturity would bring me back to the text with a different viewpoint. Uh, see, when we preach about Samson and Delilah, uh, we, we like to put a lot of emphasis on Delilah. And, and what I'm not trying to do this morning is minimize Delilah's role in the story. But I, what, what I want you to understand this morning is that in order to really understand Delilah's assignment, uh, we have to understand Samson's assignment, here it is, coupled with his undisciplined character. Can I say it again? We, we, we would always like to highlight what Delilah did, and what she did was absolutely significant in the text. Uh, but you got to look at it in relation to Samson's assignment, Samson's anointing, Samson's gifting, Samson's calling, coupled with his inability to discipline his character. Uh, so this morning, I want to walk through the text this morning, and if you would, take a journey with me through this text uh, as we find our way to strength renewed. Uh, here it is. Uh, the, the story of Samson really begins in chapter 13, and in chapter 13, we learn that the children of Israel have once again sinned against God, and he had given them into the hands of their enemies, the Philistines. We are then introduced to a man named Manoah who was from the tribe of Dan and his wife who was not named in the text. The text tells us that Manoah's wife is barren or unable to bear any children. However, an angel of the Lord appears to Manoah and he declares the word of the Lord to her that his wife shall give birth to a son. I'm so thankful that even in times now that God still brings life to barren wounds. Is there anybody who can testify this morning that God still gives life to barren wounds? wounds. And here it is, uh, while this angel was declaring in the natural uh, that he would allow, that God would allow Manoah's wife to have a child in the natural, I come to testify that there are some people who are pregnant with purpose and destiny and callings and giftings, and it seems like you have been having trouble bringing that thing to birth, but I'm crazy enough to believe that God still gives life to barren wounds, and I'm so thankful this morning uh, that God brought the word uh, to Manoah's wife, but you got to understand that God was not just allowing Manoah's wife to become pregnant with this child for naught, but there was a deliverer that she had to bring forth, uh, and this deliverer, this child's name would be Samson. Uh, here it is, the angels instructed Manoah's wife uh, that when she would bring forth this child and why while she was carrying this child that she she should not drink any strong drink neither should she eat anything unclean when the child is born, here it is, you're all familiar with this. When the child is born, no razor should come upon his head. And the angel declared that the child shall be a Nazarite. He should be sanctified or consecrated from the womb. Now the Nazarite vow was a sacred vow unto the Lord, which we find in Numbers chapter 6. And particularly Numbers chapter 6 verse 8, the text says that all the days of his consecration, that the child should should be holy unto the Lord. And I know that that's a term that we don't hear very often. It's almost a derogatory term. It's almost a, a, a cuss word in these days, but it says all of the days of his consecration. Somebody shout consecration. All of the days of his consecration shall he be holy unto the Lord. And I know we don't like to talk about consecration a whole lot these days, but I come to tell you this morning that God still requires consecration from his people. God still requires us to be set apart, and God still requires us to be sanctified, and God still requires us to live holy and set apart from the world. Here was 
the extent of this Nazarite vow. And up to this part of the text, we see something very interesting. I already told you about the barren wound, but something else interesting that I see in this text, because this child whose name was Samson, who was going to be born to this woman, uh, this woman and her husband, he was said to be a judge and a deliverer of Israel. And in order for him to preserve an anointing and that calling that was on his life, he had to be consecrated and set apart. So here's what I'm trying to tell you this morning is that consecration is preservation for the anointing of God that is on your life. You've got to understand that consecration is the very thing that keeps you in a holy place. And you've got to understand that consecration is the very place that allows the oil to keep on flowing. Just because God gifts you and anoints you with a thing does, that, does not mean that you will always be effective. But if you always want the power of God to flow in, if you always want the manifestation of the anointing of God to manifest in your life, you've got to keep yourself in a place of consecration. You've got to be set apart and set aside. When we get to the end of chapter 13, the, the, the chapter tells us uh, that the child is born, and I already told you his name is Samson. Samson grew and the Lord blessed him and at times the spirit of the Lord would move him and use him mightily in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtiol. Now here it is, we come to the beginning of chapter 14 and this is where things really begin to get interesting. We come to the beginning of chapter 14 and we are introduced to Samson as a man, Samson as a full grown adult. And, and here it is, Samson has matured, Samson has grown, Samson has experienced some things. And I find it interesting here that when we get to chapter 14, the first five words that are recorded in the text that, 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 that Samson is guilty of saying, the first five words recorded in the text reads something like this. Samson says, I have seen a woman. Now, if you know anything about the trajectory of Samson's life and Samson's ministry and Samson's ins and outs, you will realize the irony of this statement. Samson's first five words as an adult says, I have seen a woman. Now, let me be very clear this morning because what I don't want to do is demonize this idea of attraction. Yes, attraction is very important. I believe that it's important to like what you see. And I believe that it is important to be attracted to things that are pertinent to your destiny and to your purpose. But here it is, the issue lies in when all that you are ever attracted to is that which is antithetical to the purpose and the plan of God on your life, then you've got to understand that something is wrong. You've got to understand that the core and the root of that attraction needs to be examined. And if you understand the trajectory of Samson's life, you will realize that him seeing a woman is going to follow him in the days to come. But there was nothing wrong with Samson seeing a woman. But the issue lies in this, that the woman that Samson Samson saw was a Philistine and God had already instructed him not to marry outside of his culture. Here it is we find ourselves attracted to things that God has already put his stamp of disapproval on. And when your eyes are always gauging upon things that God has not ordained to be in your life, you'll find yourself in situation after situation after after situation after situation here is what I'm trying to tell you that if you are constantly attracted to things that mean you no good then perhaps there is something that is lodged in your soulish realm that needs healing and deliverance if all that you are attracted to brings you nothing but trouble and nothing but pain and nothing but destruction and nothing but heartache I come to tell you to go back 
back to the table uh, and stop blaming everybody else uh, but look in the mirror and look down within and say Lord why am I always propelled to this type of thing and this type of situation what what I'm trying to tell you this morning uh, is that paramount to your consecration uh, is the guarding of your gates uh, we must guard our gates if we are going to protect the anointing uh, and the calling of God that is on our lives uh, in Samson's case Samson uh, had to guard his eye gates uh, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6 verse 22 that the eye is the window of the body and a very common metaphor we're used to hearing uh, is that the eye is the window of the soul uh, first John tells us that no, to love not the world neither the things that are in the world because all that is in the world here it is uh, the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes uh, and the pride of life uh, I come to tell you this morning that if you are going to preserve the anointing and the gifting that is on your life you've got to learn how to guard your gates uh, perhaps it's not your eye gates that's causing you trouble uh, perhaps it's your ear gates that's causing you trouble uh, some of us some of us have itching ears and we run to everything that we hear that sounds good and some of us for us uh, our our gates that need to be guarded is not our eye gates uh, or our ear gates uh, but perhaps it's some other sense uh, uh, some of us might be the sense of touch that we need to guard uh, if you're always touching things and they fall to nothing and uh, if you're always touching things and they don't produce fruit uh, perhaps you got to go back to the table uh, and say Lord what is going on with my gates uh, there is something in the soulish realm uh, that needs deliverance there is something in the soulish realm uh, that is not in touch or in tune uh, with the will and the spirit of God so here it is, Samson sees a woman of the daughters of the Philistines and tells his parents uh, that he wants to take her as his wife. And his parents try to persuade him against it, seeing that she was a Philistine woman and the Philistines were the enemies. Uh, and Samson is persistent and says, get her for me. Here it is. Here it is. You got to follow the trail in the text. Samson says, get her for me because she pleases me or translation, she looks good to me. Uh, are you seeing the pattern that is established in Samson's character? Uh, but then the text says something very interesting to me uh, Kiana the text says uh, that his parents did not realize uh, that him desiring this woman uh, was of the Lord because the Lord was seeking occasion against the Philistines it, it didn't make sense to me when I first read it I said what what do you mean the Lord had need of him to make this decision or the Lord was seeking occasion against the Philistines well well there are many writers and theologians who find this to be a very difficult piece of text to interpret or understand for this very reason that God had already commanded them not to marry outside of their culture so here how is it that God would allow such a thing that was contrary to the command that he had already given them well, maybe I can pose it to you like this as, as I'm trying to navigate through the text. Uh, Shante, have you ever been in a situation uh, where you knew good and well you should not have been there? Uh, and you knew good and well God told you not to go there. And uh, you knew good and well God told you not to make that decision. Uh, but some way, somehow, the mercy of God uh, showed up in that situation uh, and used that very thing to steal bring his name glory I have been in some situations where I knew good and well God told me not to go there but God says well since you're here I might as well go ahead and get the glory I might as well use this thing for my good I can't make sense of it I can't explain it I knew I shouldn't have made it out of that thing but because God showed up in the fire with me he says I can still use this for my glory is there anybody 
earlier in a situation right now. You say, Lord, I know I shouldn't be here. I know I don't belong. I know this is not my purpose. I know this is not my destiny. But if you can find a way to get the glory out of my life, Lord, do what it is that you want to do in me. I'm trying to make sense of it this morning. But he said, he said, the Lord had occasion for Samson to make, and it didn't make sense. And I could only see myself in the text because there are, there are, there are some times when in your seasons that God calls you to be separated and in your seasons where God has called you uh, to be single and when your season has come that God calls you to be, I want to use this term loosely, in your seasons of isolation, uh, there are times where we will begin to become covetous uh, of everybody else around us who's being blessed and, and everybody else around us who's being booed up and, and everybody else around us who's tying the knot. But I come to tell you that you've got to learn how to be content in your season of consecration and in your season of singleness and in your season of isolation listen let me tell you something that I've learned very important in my life and I take this everywhere I go when you have not learned to enjoy your own company hear me and hear me good you will learn to tolerate the company of other disruptive people just for the sake of having good company but I come to tell you this morning that it's not worth it. I will go to the movie theater by myself. I will go to, what, 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 what is it, what is it? What, what's the name of that place? I love it and I love it good. I will go to the steakhouse by myself. I'll sit there and I'll enjoy my steak by myself and I will have a wonderful time. But you got to understand that we cannot entertain company and we cannot entertain things and we cannot entertain seasons that we have not been called to just for the sake of having company or just for the sake of saying I have something that somebody else has. You got got to learn how to be content in the season that God has you in. Clap your hands if you believe that this morning. I pray for contentment and I can only say because I've had some seasons but the Lord is a keeper. Anybody believe that this morning? The Lord is a keeper. He is the shade upon thy right hand. Ah, so Samson goes along. I got to wrap this up here. Uh, Samson goes along, and, and as he was passing the vineyards of Timnah, Timna, a young lion came roaring towards him. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily, and with his bare hands he tore the lion as easily as he would kill a baby goat. Uh, so when he got to his destination, he saw this woman uh, that he was attracted to, and they were preparing uh, for the wedding because he decided to go ahead against the will of God and marry her. So anyway... Uh, 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 they're preparing for this wedding ceremony and when he gets there uh, on his way back from this ceremony or uh, on his way back from this feast uh, he passed by the carcass or the corpse of a lion and he saw that the swarm of bees and honey were in the body or the carcass of the lion so he scraped out some of the honey and he ate it and he also gave some to his father and his mother uh, so here it is the day of the feast has come and Samson is at the feast and there are about 30 Philistine men there and Samson proposes a riddle to them y'all know the story Samson proposes a, a riddle to them he says listen out of the eater came something to eat and out of the strong came something sweet and he says listen if if within seven days of the feast you can figure out what this riddle means he says I'll give you 30 linen wraps and 30 changes of clothes you got to remember that when Samson was born his consecration was the very thing that gave him uh, the superhuman strength. Uh, it was his consecration that gave him the ability uh, to be skilled in fighting war. And here it is in this moment when Samson presents this riddle. Uh, I believe that Samson is now boasting uh, in the power and the strength that God has given him. Uh, I need you to understand this morning uh, that when you begin to move in great exploits and when you begin to move in the power 
power of God, you got to understand that it is no gifting of your own. It is only the spirit of God. It is only the presence and the power of God that is on your life. I believe that Samson was subtly boasting about his strengths and his ability to kill the lion. But you got to be careful about boasting in your strengths. Uh, the Bible says uh, that he that humbles himself shall be exalted, but he that exalts himself uh, shall be made low. Uh, you got to be careful when you begin to take credit uh, for what God has done. And you got to be careful when you try to take credit uh, for God's glory and God's power in your life. I like the way Reverend Dr. Kendrick Lamar says this. He says, he says, he says, sit down. Thank you. Be humble. Uh, you got to be careful about boasting in your own strengths. Paul says, I, I would rather glory in my infirmities. I would rather boast in my weaknesses. Because when I am weak, then God is made strong. We are only made strong in the power of God. Now, here it is. The text really begins to get good. We come to the opening of chapter 16, and I'm almost done. We come to the opening of chapter 16, and we learn that Samson once again sees a woman. My God, Samson, what are you doing? Uh, the opening of the chapter, we learn that Samson once again sees a woman in Gaza who is a prostitute, and the text says that Samson has a one-night stand with her, and and the Gazites hear of his arrival in town and they attempt to set a trap to capture Samson. However, before the night ends, Samson makes a grand escape from that town. Uh, you got to be very careful. Here it is. Samson understood his strength. He understood his anointing. He understood his power. He understood his ability to escape at the right time. Here it is. Samson is in a situation where he knew he shouldn't have been. He's playing games games on the enemy's territory. He's playing games with these Philistine women. And, and, and when they found out that Samson was over there in their camp, they sent out word and said, hey, Samson's over there at that hotel or that motel or wherever he decided to have his one night stand. And they sent their men to go over there where Samson was. And Samson got wind that they were coming. And just in the nick of time, Samson ran out of there. But let me caution you that you cannot all always play on the enemy's territory. Sometimes by the grace and the mercy of God, God allowed you to get out of some things. God allowed you to slip away from some things, but you got to be careful about towing the line. You got to be careful when you begin uh, to think that you can get away just in the nick of time. Samson was playing a dangerous game, and I come to tell somebody this morning that you ought to stop playing games on the enemy's territory. Yes, the grace and the mercy of God has been covering you and giving you favor and causing you to escape. But this is a clarion call this morning for the grace of God ah, for you to come up out of some things. You don't want to put yourself in a situation where even though he will, God has to snatch you out. You ought to get out while you can. Here's... Here's where we begin to get into the meat of the text. And we got to really focus here and pay attention because uh, when we get to chapter 16, now, now I, I wonder if you realize we haven't even talked about Delilah yet. She, Samson been messing up and she ain't even, she ain't even coming to the, into the picture yet. And this is for all of us who God has put a grace and an anointing and a gifting and a calling on our lives. I need you to understand that Samson's character was evident in chapter 13. And Delilah doesn't show up until chapter 16. We've got to learn how to begin to take some accountability uh, for the moments where we have been reckless. For the moments where we have made some bad decisions. So for some moments where we have yielded to our flesh. And for some moments where we have given in to our undisciplined disciplined character. Here it is, Samson. We come to chapter 16 and the text tells us uh, that Samson fell in love with this woman in the valley of Sarek. And this woman that Samson falls in love with, uh, her name is Delilah. 
it's interesting because the first woman that Samson actually married, he, he wanted to marry her because she looked good to him. And then, and then the woman he had a one night stand with, it, it's because he saw her and he desired her. But here in the text, it says something that none of the other text says. It says that Samson loved this woman named Delilah. Uh, you got to understand that Samson in this moment has engaged in a heart matter with this woman. And I want to caution you that you got to be careful what you fall in love with because nowhere in the text did I read that Delilah loved Samson back and I come to caution you this morning that you ought not to fall in love with things that do not love you back if there is no reciprocity if that thing cannot feed into your spirit and your purpose and your destiny in the same manner that God has anointed and graced you you ought to leave it alone leave it alone leave it alone Ah, Samson loved this woman named Delilah. Uh, and here's, here's where I need you to see what's happening in the text because the Bible says that Samson loved Delilah. And here it is. Uh, it was the lords of the Philistines who were after Samson this entire time. Uh, and when they found out that Samson was down there with Delilah, the lords of the Philistines, they knew that Samson was in love with her. So they called Delilah and they bribed her with money. They said, if you can find out the source of his strength, uh, uh, we will give you this certain amount of money. Uh, uh, here's how I like to explain it. Uh, you got to understand that Delilah is what I would like to call a lesser demon. Uh, Delilah is just something that you see on the surface. Uh, Delilah is just the tangible enemy that is in your court and in your access. But, but the lords of the Philistines are the ruling principality. Uh, the lords of the Philistines are the thing that's, that's after your gifting and your anointing. Uh, and you got to realize that all they did was employ the very thing that Samson was already in love with. The enemy knows how to employ your addictions. The enemy knows how to employ your hangups. The enemy knows how to employ your proclivities in order to snatch the anointing of God from your life. And this is why I come to tell you this morning that you got to be careful what you fall in love with. Here it is on, on the first two occasions. Delilah is trying to figure out Samson's strength. And, and on the first two occasions, uh, Samson tells Delilah that if he bind, if, if he is bound with a certain type of rope, uh, that he'll lose his strength and become like any other man. Uh, and on these first two occasions, Samson uh, was absolutely not telling the truth. Uh, Delilah had not yet pulled on his heartstrings. Uh, she was not yet able to get the secret to his success. Success, but but here it is on the third occasion uh, Samson says if you weave the seven locks of my hair with a web uh, if can anybody tell me what's wrong with this picture well on the first two occasions uh, Samson said if you bind me with a certain type of rope but but on the third occasion Samson allowed Delilah uh, to know the secret of his strength uh, and what I believe was happening here was a moral and and an emotional decomposition. Samson knew the power of his locks and, and although they were yet not shaved, Delilah, he allowed Delilah that much closer to the secret of his strength. And I come to tell you this morning that spiritual death happens one compromise at a time. You got to understand that it doesn't happen overnight, but you got to understand that every step that you take out of the will of God and every step that you take out of the purpose and the plan of God brings you one step closer to defeat and destruction but I'm so glad that we serve a God who loves us and a God who is able to get us out of every situation here it is you got to understand that that Delilah was that much closer to Samson's strength than the secret of his strength so here it is Samson is tired one night because remember he's running from 
his enemies. Uh, one night he gets tired and he decides to lay his lap, his head in the lap of Delilah. Uh, and I come to tell you this morning uh, that when you are called to be a deliverer and when you are called to be anointed and uh, when you are called to be the chain breaker in your family, uh, truth of the matter is sometimes you get tired. Uh, the truth of the matter is sometimes you get weary. Uh, am I talking to anybody? Uh, sometimes you get tired of fighting the same devils and sometimes you get tired of fighting the same situations. Uh, sometimes you get weary of fighting and toiling uh, and here it is Samson gets tired uh, and he decides to lay his head in the lap of his enemy. Uh, I come to tell you in this season of your life uh, even though you get tired and even though you get weary uh, you got to be careful where you lay your head. Uh, don't you lay your head uh, in the lap of bitterness don't you lay your head in the lap of hatred don't you lay your head in the lap of promiscuity I come to tell you that in Jesus Christ there is rest, there is rest for your weary soul Samson Samson gets tired one night. Samson, Samson gets tired one night. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but there is somebody who's getting tired and somebody who's getting weary and you're ready to throw in the towel. You're ready to make some decisions that could cost you everything. But I come to tell you this morning, don't you dare make that decision. Uh, don't you dare throw in the towel. Don't you dare give in to what your flesh and your heart desires. I come to declare that the strength and the power of God is going to rise up in you this morning uh, in the name of Jesus. So, so here it is. Here it is. Uh, Delilah, Delilah gets Samson uh, to lay his head in her lap. And, and, and while he is there, while he is asleep, the Bible says that Delilah shaves off the locks of his head. Uh, and while he is laying there, here it is, uh, uh, she calls the enemy, she calls the Philistines uh, to come in and say, I've got him, I've got him, I've got him. Now, here it is, here it is. She wakes Samson up and she says, Samson, the Philistines are coming to get you. And here it is, Samson wakes up and the Bible says, that he shakes himself just like he always did only to realize that the power of God was no longer on him and I come to tell you this morning that God will bring you to a place where you can no longer be victorious in playing on the enemy's camp God will bring you to a place where he will cause you to run out of fuel you've been running in your own direction for a long time you've been doing your own thing for a long time you've been going your own way for a long time but I come to declare that you're getting ready to run out of fuel for the energy to give the enemy what he desires and God is getting ready to bring you into a place where it's just you and him. He's getting ready to eliminate all of the distractions because he's got to get your attention here it is they capture Samson and they throw him in prison and I'm almost done uh, and while while Samson is in the prison the Bible says that they pluck his eyes out oh my god uh, while, while Samson is in the prison they gouge out his eyes and, and this seems like a terrible thing I'm almost done this this seems like a terrible thing but perhaps Mama Bev it wasn't such a bad thing uh, that they plucked Samson's eyes out why I, I need you to see this in the spirit this morning the Bible says that if your eyes offend you uh, then you ought to pluck them out uh, you got to understand in the spirit this morning uh, that sometimes God God will bring you to a place where he's got to incapacitate your weakness that God will bring you to a place where your weakness can no longer serve you and God will bring you to a place where your addictions can no longer satisfy you he will bring you to a place where it's just you and him and him alone you in a place where there is nothing else you can do but lean and depend on God so here it is Samson is 
is in the prison. And the Bible says that they pluck out his eyes and he is down there. Then they're making sport of him and they're making fun of him and they're playing games with him. But but because Samson cannot see, the Bible says that there is a little boy down there who is guiding him everywhere he needs to go. And I'm getting ready to close this morning. But the Bible says that while Samson is in the prison, uh, the Philistine rulers, they say, bring Samson to us because we want to make sport of him. They say, bring Samson to us. We want him to entertain us. So here it is. There are about 3,000 men and women of the Philistines all gathered in this one place. And they are rejoicing because they finally captured Samson. And I come to tell you this morning that there is somebody in the room whose enemies are rejoicing because they think that this is your end. They think that this is your destruction. There are some folks in the room this morning. Your enemies are surrounding you and they think that this is your demise. But I come to tell you this morning that we getting ready to enter into a season of victory in the text. Well, the Bible says that Samson said to the little boy, I want you to bring me in between the pillars of this prison. Bring me in between the structure that's holding this thing all together. And he says, position me right in the middle. And Samson, he puts one hand on the left pillar and he puts his other hand on the right pillar. And the Bible says that while they're laughing at Samson, Samson begins to pray to God. And he says, Lord, remember me. He says, if you would give me strength one more time. Is there anybody in the room this morning who has a one more time in your spirit? Is there anybody who has another yes, Lord, in your spirit? You ought to throw up your hands and say, yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. You ought to surrender your will and surrender your ways to God. So here it is. The Bible says that Samson prayed and his hair began to grow back. And I come to declare to somebody this morning that your hair is getting ready to grow back. I come to declare that your strength is getting ready to grow back. You've been getting tired and you've been getting weary and you were ready to throw in the towel. But I dare you to pray to God and say, Lord, give me strength one more time and God will begin to rejuvenate your strength. And here it is. Samson is positioned between the pillars and the Bible says that he began to pray and God honors his prayer and he takes one bow with all of his might and all of the prison came tumbling down and the Bible says that here in one place at one time Samson defeated more in his death than he could ever defeat in his life and I come to tell you this morning that if you can defeat more in your death than you can defeat in your life then you ought to die to some things this morning you ought to die to your own will you ought to die to your own ways you ought to die to your own flesh and allow the power of God to be resurrected in you and I come to declare that when you give God another yes he'll begin to renew your strength he's gonna give you your joy back he's gonna give you your peace back he's gonna give you your power back is there anybody who needs some renewed strength this morning you ought to lift those hands and tell God thank you give me strength I declare renewed strength. See, you got to understand that we, we always like to blame the devil. Samson lost his strength, but, but he didn't lose his strength for nothing. And there was something that caused his strength to be depleted. And I need you all this building. We're standing because we got to go all over this building standing. I need you to begin to examine your life and examine past seasons and examine past situations and say, 
Lord, what is it that caused me to lose my strength? Where did I lay my, where did I lay my gifting down? Where, where did I lay my anointing down? Where, where did I trade in your power for, for destruction? And where did I trade in my, your will for my will? You got to begin to examine some things. But I'm so glad this morning that even though we get ourselves into some situations, God won't leave us there. I, I, know, I know I got myself there, but Lord, I'm going to need you to help me to get out of this one. And I come to declare that God will come to your rescue and and give you renewed strength but it's going to require another yes from you it's going to require another level of surrender from you it's going to require us to to lay down our own wills and lay down our own desires and say Lord Whatever it is that you want for me, whatever it is that you desire for me, whatever your will is for my life, we'll say yes to you. Spirit of the living God, we just want to say thank you this morning. We thank you for your mercy and we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your loving kindness. Lord God, we thank you uh, because you have been good to us and you've been kind to us. We thank you, God. Because you rescued us out of some situations and you've, you've rescued us out of some seasons and you've rescued us out of some turmoil. And Lord, we thank you this morning because you did not allow our enemies to triumph over us. I pray this morning, God, that you would begin to release renewed strength. I pray and declare a fresh wind in this place. I declare, Lord God, that you are getting ready to allow your people to breathe again and, and to run again. Your word declares that they that wait upon you, you shall renew their strength, O oh God. Let them mount up with wings as eagles. Let, let them run and not be weary. Let them walk and not faint, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, every weak and downtrodden heart this morning, I pray that you would release strength in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for renewed strength and we thank you for new power this morning I pray God that you would even begin to bring us into a place uh, into a season of consecration Lord God set us apart oh God and set us aside for your glory in the name of Jesus God rise up in us rise up in power rise up in might and we shall take our rightful places as kings and as queens and as princes and as rulers oh God you have given us a grace of, of healing and a grace of deliverance, Lord God. And we will take our rightful places in the name of Jesus. And we will go forth in power and we will go forth in might. And we thank you, Lord God, for all that you're going to do in us and through us in this season. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. One more time, people of God, clap your hands for renewed strength this morning. Thank you for renewed strength. Thank you for renewed strength. Thank you for renewed strength. I pray, I pray that something that I said was a blessing to you. I pray that you got something out of this word this morning. Before we go, and we're going to move quickly, before we go, amen, we want to be a blessing. We want to prepare our hearts and our minds for giving. Amen. Thank you to all of you who have come this morning. If this is your first time visiting with us, we welcome you. We say thank you for coming, and we hope to see you again. If you need an envelope this morning, if you per prefer to give by cash or check, if you need an envelope, raise your hand, and one of the ushers will see you. You can also give electronically this morning. Our options to give are cash app, do dollar sign 1223GS. Or you can give by text to give 908-280-4957. Or you can give by Venmo at Guiding Star. Amen. We want to take this moment to give. We're going to ask our brother Dave to give us some giving music.
hearts and minds are clear. Is everybody satisfied with their giving this morning? Amen. Let us stand to our feet and go. Y'all, I, I preached a little longer than I anticipated this morning. Ooh, but I, I, genuinely, I genuinely pray that you were blessed by this word this morning. <clears throat> and we praise God for strength renewed. We praise God for strength renewed. Listen, today's going to be a beautiful day, beautiful weather. I pray that you enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Amen. Go enjoy your family, your friends. Enjoy. Uh, and go with God. Take him everywhere you go. Amen. God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for all that has been said and done in this place. Father, you be glorified in our lives. Move in us like never before. And God, as we leave this place but never your presence, go with us and be with us until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. You are dismissed. <laughs>